Hey everybody, welcome to a video on troubleshooting and repairing a video projector ballast. I have a, a pair of ballasts here. Uh, this one's out of a SmartBoard UX60. Uh, this is out of a, I forget, a BenQ maybe, but it's essentially the same ballast. It's a, uh, actually it's almost identical as the 5.8 one one four six oh one DG and this is a five eight one one five two oh one DG. What the specific difference is I don't know because they look identical to me aside from the board color. They both are rated uh with the Osram part number PTVIP03 mid and they're two hundred and thirty watt ballasts. Now both of them have bad MOSFETs. A little switching guys here. Uh, this one, that one I marked as bad. I'll mark on the bottom too. And on this one, that one's bad. This one right here. So essentially the uh, row closest to the controller is having a problem. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot these and then how to repair them. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take two and make one. And then I'll save the one that we pull the parts out of because I will find or buy new MOSFETs to put in it. Unless, actually, one moment. Yeah, actually, I'm glad I uh, paused that for a moment because I have... A pair of 32N20s. And these should be good. Let's see if these are good. Checking MOSFETs with a meter can be a little tricky. Um, I like to use my component tester most of the time, but this will be able to, you know, make sure we're in good shape. So I shouldn't have any continuity or any resistance from gate to source or drain. That's good. Now if I switch the other way, yep, I should have around nine or ten meg from source or from gate or uh, source to drain, drain to source. And I think this may turn on. No, not enough current to test it. But these are good, and since they were pulled from another ballast, I know they'll work in here because it's the same parts as these. So we're going to fix both ballasts. But I'm going to show you how we troubleshoot it first. We'll start with this one. Um, ballast is not as complicated as it looks. There is DC 380 to 400 that comes in here. After it goes through there, you can see the negative side just kind of goes into the ground. The positive side goes through that inductor. And then it goes to the uh, MOSFET on this heat sink. That's what turns it on. And there's a diode on the other side. And it's got an inductor. And then the control circuitry. This actually controls all the MOSFETs, turns it on, and... These optical isolators here are what allows the interface between the projector and the ballast without having any high voltage that could leak through. It actually is electrically isolated here. And then these actually run the lamp itself through the uh, inductor there and through these high voltage capacitors. That's the lamp output right here. That sends power out to the lamp. So... What I want to do is check all of the obvious semiconductors. So we're going to check this MOSFET and then these four as well as this diode. So we'll start with the diode. It's on the heat sink. It's these two pins right here. So one way should have much higher resistance than the other way. So I have 10K that way. And 73K 
K that way. So that means if I go to diode test, yep, open. And we should measure the diode right there. There we are, 0 0.39, 0 0.389 volts dropping across it. So that's good. Let's go back to resistance and we'll go to this MOSFET. Again, from gate, which is on the left side when it's this way, right side when it's that way. You want to, from get source to drain, you may get stuff. That's fine. It should read high, though. At least 10K or so, minimum. And then from gate to drain, should also be very high. We're in the meg range here, and it's just going up. And then from gate to source, nothing. So that's good. The other way to tell if it's the source or not is the, uh, or the gate, I mean, the source and drain will be connected to things that handle high power, um, such as that diode or the inductor that it's soldered to here. So that's good. So now let's go to the lamp driver section MOSFETs. So that's going to be this, these three pins, these three pins, these three pins, and these three pins. So again, gate is going to be on the left side if we're facing it. So if I flip it over, gate, 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 gate. So we'll check source to drain first. Because if there's a short, that's usually where you're going to see it first. And these are all in the meg range, which is good. Now I am reading other components, so it's not going to be exact. Now let me get to this one. We have about zero. It's almost dead short. So let's flip the probe, see if we get it still. Yep. So now let's throw the gate in the mix. Go from gate to source, 1.1 1 .1 ohm. And gate to drain, 1.1 1 .1 ohm. So that, as I have marked here, is bad. The rest are all right. So that one's going to come out. And then on this one, you can see I already did it. Very similar. Zero ohms. Very one ohm, one and a half ohm. So they should all read like that. It's nice when you have the same components together because then you can kind of compare and contrast. All right, so to take this out, we're going to wet the solder. I'm going to try my new little super cheapy iron that I got whole little desoldering kit. It was like 30 bucks on Amazon. I had to try it. It's not too bad. The uh, solder pump I like. The iron does have adjustable temperature on it though. It's kind of cool. So you power switch and then temp in Fahrenheit and put it around 800. Because these do suck some heat up. So I just want to wet the old solder because it looks like they used lead free. It's going to make desoldering not as much fun. All right. There's the gate. Now we'll get the drain. Now I'm letting the heat build up on the pins a little bit. Because these are a through hole, so I need to uh, get a nice and warm. Still may need to do it twice or use the uh, hot air gun to get it out the rest of the way. Eh, not bad. Not bad. But that's a pretty big pad. I was not letting it heat all the way through, so I'm going to try again. Much better. So what I'm going to do is I am prying across that board. I'm just 
slowly burning myself as I pull it out. <laughs> so you can see, I heated it up and finally it popped out. I did uh, kiss my thumb a little though. That's okay. All right, so one is out. And just so I don't mix it up, I'm going to cut one of the legs off. And now we can take this one apart. Let's see if the uh, if it works a little better on here. Then I'll show you the other way. I pull these out. So obviously doing the pry method's a little burny. So that one I'm going to do again. This one I may have desoldered. Try this one. Maybe. Maybe I can pull this one out. Let's see. Huh. So you can desolder these. You don't have to do it with the little burn yourself with the screwdriver method. So let's get our new one, replacement, and we're just gonna drop it right in. Since it's already out of a compatible ballast, the legs are already bent to fit. Just organize it a little. All right. Sometimes you do have to hold these, other times they'll stay on their own. And then we'll solder them like that. And we'll just straighten them out again. And that one's fixed. And let's put the uh, replacement part in this one. I do wonder if I have to clean those holes out. It looks like I might. Yeah. Now, because I didn't desolder that thoroughly enough, it has uh, not enough space in the holes. So I'm going to use some wick. There we go. And if you don't have wick, you can actually use a piece of um, stranded wire, speaker wire, some type of stranded copper. Works really well. Not as well as wick, but better than nothing. All right, and then we'll solder these. And then I'm gonna turn the temperature down on this iron. Just running it at 800 while it's sitting is gonna wreck that amazingly nice tip. That's a joke, by the way. Iron did come with a couple other tips though. So I'm pretty sure these are Heiko type. Here's a uh, Heiko, or a AU, IU, you know, it's the Chinese type that you see a lot of. Mm. 
this tip's a mess. And in fact, while I have this open, I will put a new tip on it. Let's go with this one. And again, this isn't my uh, new iron. That's the old one. There we go. That one's fixed too. Let's uh, just straighten that. That'll look good. Ballast and ballast. Let's uh, put the meter on it and see what it looks like. Good. Yep, looking good so far. All I'm doing is checking for any shorts that we don't expect. Or any low values. I'm not looking for a specific number. I'm just looking for low numbers versus high numbers. As long as I keep seeing that meg when I measure these, that's good. All right. So these are good. I now have another set of ballasts to keep. Those are very popular. 230 watt ballasts. Those are the transistors that I pulled out, or the MOSFETs, rather, I pulled out. So let's see how they check out of circuit. So those things just shorted all over the place. As is that one. So they're definitely bad. And there you go. So uh, if you have a 230-watt Osram ballast, or really any kind of ballast, you can follow the same troubleshooting methods. Um, there are interchangeable parts. There are some 2SK series MOSFETs that'll work in place of these. I just happen to have a uh, scrap down ballast that still had them. So if you have any questions, comments, etc., you know where to put them. There we go. Still practicing that. And uh, if you don't subscribe, you can click the subscribe button if you feel like it. And if not, I won't be offended. I'm just glad you're watching. And as always, thank you for watching.